So first we have to start in the ordinary world, which is life as we're used to it, right? Yeah, so in this cycle, in, in the Lord's Prayer, we first affirm, Our Father in the heavens, your name must be kept sacred. This is the beginning of our cycle. We believe in God, and we just have some affirmation of God's existence or God's place in our life. Then we have the call to adventure and the initial refusal of the call. Your kingdom must come is the call to adventure because we're asking for God's kingdom to come. But the catch or refusal is that actually we just want our version of the kingdom to come. Right. In other words, we hear the call on an intellectual level, but on an inward heart level, we refuse. We just want things to go our way. And then there's the meeting of the mentor. Meeting the mentor doesn't always involve an actual person, but it does always come on the heels of committing to the new horizon set before us. In the prayer, it's, your will must be done, as in heaven, so also on the earth. The shift here in our spiritual lives is us coming to recognize that asking for the Lord's kingdom to come means having the Lord's will be done. We've come to a more personal experience of God, or this is God as mentor. So having God's kingdom come means having God's will be done, not just out there in heaven like somewhere else, but in our lives, quote unquote, on earth. Then things really begin when we cross the threshold. In the prayer, it's, give us our daily bread today. We've acknowledged the Lord's will, but here we realize it means having the Lord's will be done in our daily lives, like giving our lives to God. And daily, Swedenborg writes, means every moment, and bread means everything we need for our spiritual lives. So we recognize that we need to let the Lord rule in the details. But that means things don't always go our way, and that often they don't go how we expect them to go. So when we cross the threshold into a daily life of the Lord's will being done, what does that bring? In the hero's journey, it brings tests, allies, and enemies. In the prayer, this is, and forgive us our debts as we too forgive our debtors. This phrase has within it an acknowledgement that we have shortcomings. Right. What was initially our outer confidence of, yeah, I want the Lord's will to be done, sure. It leads us to an inner recognition that we're actually works in progress. This process of the Lord's kingdom coming requires surrendering our will and recognizing that we can't control others either. So it brings us into a struggle between the inner and outer self. This struggle is designed ultimately to free us of our debts. Next, we have the approach to the inmost cave, which really gets us into the thick of things. Yeah, this is, and don't put us to the test. The struggle that has arisen leads us to temptation. Or another way to say this line in the prayer is, you don't lead us into temptation, but you do deliver us from evil. Which means we just ultimately have evils arise in us, which brings on spiritual struggle on our path to heaven. But the Lord is guiding the whole process continually with nothing but divine goodness and mercy. In this part of the cycle, we enter spiritual crises that the Lord carefully guides in order to bring about the actual inversion of our spirit. Our inner self, rooted in heaven, finally gains the upper hand, and our outer self-will finally becomes subservient. And then the ordeal brings things to a head. The ordeal is the last part of the climax, and it ultimately leads to the reward. In the prayer, this is, but free us from the evil one. The Lord delivers us from our spiritual crisis. Truly, He's been leading the process the whole time. And it can seem like suffering for no reason, but the Lord is freeing us from evil through all of this. Every hardship is a means for the Lord to lead us further on our spiritual path. And then it's time for the road back. The road back can be matched with the kingdom is yours. We're humbled, and having come through our spiritual crisis, we recognize the Lord's kingdom is real, and we actually desire it at heart. We have now been transformed. After the road back is the resurrection. We've been transformed as we're facing life's challenges in a new way, as a new kind of person. Yep, we affirm God's power. The power is yours. We're now renewed in trust that the Lord really does have all power and guides our process unceasingly. So it's really this empowered state. We've been carried all along, and now we want the Lord's power to have full rule in us. And finally, the return with elixir. We've come back from this cycle with spiritual gifts that we can keep. And the prayer ends, and the glory is yours forever. With renewed trust and affirmation of the Lord's kingdom, we feel courageous to continue our journey. We see how our lives magnify the Lord's glory, 
and how our path is really in the Lord's hands forever. Wow. So all together, the prayer takes us on this journey through like an entire spiritual growth cycle. Mm -hmm.